members of the Expedition 42 crew include four men and two women from three different countries, serving together on the world's only international space station. U.S. Navy Captain Barry Wilmore grew up in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, a suburb of Nashville. It's a place and time he remembers for great friends and a great school program that nurtured his natural impulses. My parents, my mom specifically, told me that my first word was not mama or daddy, it was why. I've always, always been inquisitive and you know, what's out there and how's that work and, and those, type of, those type of thoughts have always been within me. After high school in Mount Julia, Wilmore walked on to the football team at Tennessee Technological University, despite being what he describes as slow, small, and weak. But his urge to know why kicked in, and he earned a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. Then, what he calls a patriotic tug pulled him to the Navy. After finishing flight school and picking up the call sign Butch, Wilmore made two deployments during Operation Desert Storm, then went to the Navy Test Pilot School, and later earned two master's degrees, one in aviation systems from the University of Tennessee, and the other in electrical engineering from TTU, before making two more overseas deployments. Then he taught at the Navy's and the Air Force's test pilot schools before being selected as an astronaut in 2000. Wilmore made his first space flight as the pilot on a space shuttle mission that delivered express logistics carriers and other parts to the International Space Station in late 2009. This mission gives him the chance to push the boundaries of human knowledge. We do science and various things, hopefully for the betterment of mankind. That's why the station exists, so we can turn around what we learn there and, 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 and use it here on Earth. That's our purpose. And to, to go and, and have the opportunity to do that, like I said, is, is very, very humbling. Alexander Samokutyayev was born and raised in Penza, southeast of Moscow. As a boy, he loved science and ice hockey, but he had no real doubt about what he would do with his life. A lot of children, when you ask them who they want to be, um, sometimes it's hard for them to answer. As long as I remember myself, it was never a difficult question for me. Who do you want to be? I always knew I was going to be a pilot. Maybe a little bit later, I realized I wanted to be a military pilot. Semakutiyayev made his first flight as a pilot at age 16. After high school, he went to the Chernigov Air Force Pilot School in Ukraine, graduating in 1992 and starting his career in the Russian Air Force. He graduated from the Gagarin Air Force Academy in 2000 and was assigned to the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center as a division chief before being selected to start cosmonaut training himself in 2003. He completed one spacewalk on his first flight, a 164-day mission to the International Space Station as flight engineer on Expeditions 27 and 28. Since then, he retired from the Russian Air Force as a colonel and has been studying finance and economics at the Russian Government Service Academy but he's eager to continue the exploration of space. And with the prospect of flying to distant planets, maybe out into the solar system, right now we're laying the foundation, the stepping stone that we can do and can implement as part of the ISIS project. Elena Serova, the fourth Russian woman to go to space, and the first since 1997, was born in the far east of Russia, in a town called Vozdvizenka, where her father was stationed with the Soviet military. There, she learned to love the star-filled sky and developed an appreciation for flight on trips with her father to the airfield. As a young student, she was influenced by the writings of Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, the Russian father of rocketry, and by the leading personalities of the early Soviet space program. When I was in school, my first teacher told us about different achievements in uh, cosmonautics and uh, I was very much impressed by those first flights from Svetlana Savitska in particular, who was the first woman performing a spacewalk. She was an amazing individual. Sarova spent part of her teens in Germany when her father was transferred there, but she returned to Moscow when it was time for college. She pursued her interest in space and engineering at the Moscow Aviation Institute, graduating from its aerospace department 
and then going to work as a test engineer at the Rocket Space Corporation Energia, while also earning a postgraduate degree in economics from the Moscow Academy of Machinery and Informatics. She was selected for Russia's Cosmonaut Corps in 2006 and is eager for the opportunity to go to space and improve life on Earth. We don't do it for ourselves, we do it for others, for future generations, so that uh, people on Earth live better, they have better opportunities, they have uh, better conditions of life on Earth. So that's what we do when we take the risk. Air Force Colonel Terry Virts is a native of Baltimore who grew up in nearby Columbia, Maryland. His parents worked at NASA and astronaut was his goal since he was a little kid. And there's something about me naturally that I just love flying in space. When I was a kid I had space pictures and airplane pictures. My room was, all four walls were completely covered with posters of, of that kind of stuff. Flying remained his passion. And after high school, he went to the Air Force Academy and earned a bachelor's in mathematics. He earned his wings at Williams Air Force Base in Arizona and then flew F-16s operationally while stationed in the United States, Korea, and Germany, while also earning a master's of science in aeronautics from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Virts went to Edwards Air Force Base in California for Air Force test pilot training and worked as a test pilot there until he was selected as a NASA astronaut in 2000. Virts was the pilot and lead robotics operator on the 2010 space shuttle mission that delivered the Tranquility Module and the Cupola to the International Space Station. He completed the general management program at Harvard Business School in 2011 before starting training for this flight, which he feels is part of the plan to achieve humankind's goal of living off of this planet. There's a lot that we can learn from robotics and it's a, it's a great partnership and they can do things that people can't do, but people can do things that they can't do. And ultimately, it's about us being there and living there. And if we're gonna do that, we have to go there and live there. Anton Shkaplerov was born and raised in Sevastopol, the home of the Russian Navy's Black Sea Fleet. Though his father worked on a submarine, Shkaplerov became fascinated with spaceflight as a boy and felt that the Air Force was the best path to cosmonaut. When I was 15 in the 8th grade, I joined an uh, aviation club uh, in Sevastopol. I flew small planes, and so when I turned 16, I got my pilot's license, and I started flying uh, aircrafts on my own. After high school, Shkaplerov went to the Kaczynsk Air Force Pilot School in Volgograd and graduated as a pilot engineer. He flew MiG-29s while attending the Zukovsky Air Force Engineering School, then spent six years as a pilot instructor while also flying as a member of the Sky Hussars, a flight demonstration squadron. Shkaplerov was selected as a cosmonaut in 2003 and made his first trip to the International Space Station as a flight engineer on Expeditions 29 and 30 in 2011 and 2012. He retired from the Russian Air Force as a colonel after that flight and earned a PhD in aerodynamics from Russia's Military Aviation Engineering Academy in 2014 while finishing the training for this flight, which he feels is blazing a trail to space for humankind to follow. I'm ready to take all these risks um, to get this shot of adrenaline because I know that every day on board benefits humankind. And when I am on board the International Space Station, I am on at, at the forefront of space exploration. Italian Air Force Captain Samantha Cristoforetti is a native of Milan, but she grew up in the Italian Alps in a small tourist town of Mali where her parents ran a hotel. She doesn't remember a time that she didn't love adventure or want to explore space. I was very fortunate to enjoy a childhood in which you, you can roam around as a child, you know, unsupervised, you don't have adults with you all the time. And maybe that's where I got that taste for adventure that I think is very much part of uh, that desire I always had to, to go to space. Her adventurous nature persisted as she grew up. She spent her junior year of high school abroad in St. Paul, Minnesota, because it was in the country that had the most exciting space program. Then she earned a degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Munich, 
which included research in aerodynamics done in Toulouse and in solid rocket propellants in Moscow. Next, she joined Italy's Air Force Academy, just as the country first allowed voluntary military service by women, while also completing a bachelor's degree in aeronautical sciences at the University of Naples. Then it was flight training at the NATO school at Shepard Air Force Base in Texas, followed by fighter training. And when one of the infrequent astronaut selections by the European Space Agency came up, she applied for the program even though she was doing her operational conversion to the AMX ground attack fighter. She was selected for ESA's astronaut corps in 2009 and is now eager to contribute to making a reality out of her dream. Imagine humanity in 500 years. Do you imagine humanity being still earthbound, like we still are not able to go anywhere else? It, it, to me, it's being part of the, you know, the first step towards that future that is so obviously part of, of what's coming for, for humanity.